Hello friends, this video on microorganisms friend and foe part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction to microbes Good microbes, bad microbes and food preservation techniques. Now what are we going to study in this lesson? The name states microorganisms, friend or foe. Okay, now have you ever uh, seen your mom asking you always to maintain hygiene and cleanliness? She never allows you to eat without washing your hands. She always tells you to clean your hands before eating anything. Or in case you do not wash your hands properly, she asks you to use a spoon rather than your hands to eat. She also asks you to clean and brush your teeth properly so that you are able to maintain them clean. She also asks you to take bath regularly and clean your body properly. And not only that, she herself also maintains enough cleanliness in the house. She cleans the floor as well as the entire house properly so that there is no dirt or dust anywhere. Now the question is, why is your mom so very particular about maintaining cleanliness and hygiene? The reason is very important. The reason is the fear of microbes. So what are microbes? Yes, they are definitely scary things to some extent, but not really always. Now, microbes are microorganisms, that is extremely small organisms, which we cannot see with our naked eye. Because if we are able to see some organism with our naked eye, then it is quite simple to get, of, get rid of those organisms. For example, when you see a cockroach, if you don't like a cockroach, what do you do? You just kill it because you are able to see it. Now, had the cockroach been so small that you are not even able to see it, then how will you clean it? Uh, kill it. You don't even know that it is present there. So a similar scare is there for these microorganisms because they are extremely small. They are so small that we cannot see them with our naked eyes. Now when we can't see them, we really don't know whether they are present or not. But these microorganisms can cause a lot of diseases and that is why they are scary to us. So whenever we think of microorganisms, now instead of using the term microorganism, if I use the term germs, I think you will relate to it, it even better. You would have seen so many advertisements coming on the television saying that uh, you should wash your hands with this soap or with uh, this uh, hand cleaner soap to protect yourself against germs. So what exactly are these germs? All we are told is that if we do not maintain hygiene and cleanliness, it will give rise to germs. And what are germs? Germs can attack us and they can cause diseases. So these germs are nothing but the microorganisms and these microorganisms are capable of causing a disease. So whenever we think of these kind of microorganisms, they have that appearance of a devil for us. So we feel that, oh my God, microorganisms are really, really scary, isn't it? So why do we have that scare for them? Because we always have it in our mind that microorganisms means that they will attack us and they will cause some disease in us. They will make us fall ill. But now the question is, are microorganisms always harmful? So that is that the only purpose that they solve? They want to harm us in some way or the other? Well, not really. So microorganisms can also be friendly. So there are two categories of microorganisms. So one is the good microorganisms or the friendly microorganisms and the other category is the harmful microorganisms. So these harmful organisms are the ones which are to be scared of. So they can cause diseases, they can make us ill, but the friendly microorganisms, they are not going to harm us. Instead, they are going to help us. We will see in this lesson that what are those friendly microorganisms which help us and what are those harmful organisms which harm us. 
So we will talk about both the good as well as the bad sides of the microorganisms. Now, before we talk about all that, I think it is important to understand what exactly are microorganisms, which kind of organisms fall under the category of microorganisms. Now, microbes and microorganisms, these two terms are used interchangeably. So microbes are also known as microorganisms. So please do not get confused with the terms. So now the basic question, what are microbes? So these are extremely small organisms that cannot be seen with naked eyes. Now something which is extremely small, for that purpose we use the term micro. Micro means very small. So these are very small organisms. So how can we see them? We cannot see them with our naked eye, but we can see them with the help of a magnifying glass or a microscope. So magnifying glass helps us to see those microorganisms which are at least comparatively little bigger but if the organism is extremely small then you cannot see it even with a magnifying glass in that case you would need a microscope of higher resolution so without a magnifying glass or without a microscope you cannot see it at all they are also called as microorganisms now, example of microorganisms are bacteria, fungi, viruses. These are all examples of microorganisms. Now, you would have heard about, uh, heard people saying that, okay, I fell ill because I, I had a viral fever. Have you ever heard people talking like that? Or somebody says that, you know what, I got a bacterial infection in my throat. So, what are these viral fever, bacterial infection, fungal diseases? So, these are basically the problems or the diseases which are caused by any of these organisms. But that doesn't mean that bacteria, fungi or viruses are only meant to cause diseases. So, that is not the case. So, here in this lesson, we will talk about how these organisms can be helpful and how these organisms can be harmful. Now, one important thing which I would like to mention here is whenever I talk about a virus, we have you have to consider a star mark on viruses. That's because viruses are quite different from other microorganisms and that is why viruses are often not categorized as a microorganism. Now why I have included it in the example is viruses are also extremely small so they also cannot be seen with naked eyes. So as per that definition viruses have been included in the example but when you talk about the classification of microorganisms viruses are not included because viruses do not show the basic characteristics of a living organism. So please do remember that viruses are an exception. They do not behave like a living organism as long as they are outside a host body. Now as soon as it enters inside the body of another organism, for example the virus enters inside a bacteria, then it starts be behaving like a living organism. So because of this peculiar property of viruses, they are often not included as a classification of microorganism. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.